zone you out in the first five minutes. It's help you. No, you just say it. You zone me out for the first 30 minutes. It's like a meeting of Tuesday. Go to the right. He'll help you say that, though. All right, gentlemen, we're on camera, so... Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting from May 28th, 2013. My name is Rob Garrity. I'm the chairman of the board this year. And uh, to my right is Scott Bugby, our vice chair. And to my left is the rookie, uh, the new guy, Jim Lehan, our clerk. Uh, we are joined by Jack Athaway, our town administrator. And no Marion Harrington tonight, but Harrington tonight, but we do have Sue Jacobson, who's filling in as executive assistant to the board. Uh, we're joined by Bob McGee, our DPW head at the uh, at the table. I would like to tell everyone who is here, the throngs and the multitudes, that we are audio and video taped this evening. So keep that in mind. Mr. Hathaway, would you like to read the agenda? I'd be happy to, sir. Uh, it's first order of business. We have Robert McGee, the, as you said, the DPW. Director in for an update. Uh, at 7.30, we'll be joined by the library trustees. Uh, we are looking to seek a replacement appointment for Harvey Boulay, who has uh, unfortunately resigned from the board as he's moving out of town. Uh, we have some action items, including uh, two Chapter 90 requests, some uh, procurement uh, bids to vote on from Surge, and then uh, a request to vote some Ballards, Ballards, actually, that we have uh, as surplus equipment and uh, be prepared to sell to the Department of Corrections. Uh, followed by discussion items, including the Board of Selectmen liaisons and goals for 2013 and 14, appointing of constables, uh, selectmen expiring appointments, fire callback strategy, and a recap of the annual town meeting. Uh, we do have one set of uh, executive and regular session minutes to approve for April 24th. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Lehan. Well, You're welcome, Mr. Bugby. <laughs> that cough syrup is good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so we're joined can by... Can uh, share that so we can all take the <laughs> same trip? <laughs> here by Mr. McGee, uh, joined by Mr. McGee, our DPW director. So what do you have for us tonight, Bob? Well, I have a, a list of things. I didn't know if there was anything specific uh, or... <coughs> anything more important than, uh, than another to talk about, but I, I'll just go down the line if you don't mind, and a couple mm -hmm. of things I wouldn't mind bringing up and bringing to your attention. I have a little uh, something to discuss with you, as you already know, uh, our paving schedule, construction schedule for this summer, uh, funded by Chapter 90. Um, I would like to advise you of our, our lawn care contract that we're extending one more year with a contract that has been signed up for the last three years. A um, little something about our water new source development mm -hmm. where we stand with that. Um, about our walkways in the center with the uh, proposal for cobbles. <coughs> um, a couple of bridge concerns that I have, um, I'll mention without going into long detail. Um, a grant that's out there that might interest you, Mr. Garrity, because it uh, <coughs> involves, as a candidate, the Freeman Kennedy School in Boardman Street sidewalks program. Mm -hmm. um, I brought along a municipal infrastructure report you're probably not familiar with, but I'll explain that once we get down there. A little bit about the truck exclusion and one last item in regarding uh, right-of-way bonding for the subdivision Fern Ridge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, why don't you start with the top? Well, this year, um, just, to, just to brief you really quickly, um, you know, coming out of the wintertime, what we normally do is, and I brought... Tom Benedetti along uh, because he's largely the guy that ramrods this thing but coming out of the winter time we um, we find ourselves as soon as the weather breaks cleaning up lawns curbing and potholes mm -hmm. you know during the winter time we use a, a, a uh, cold patch mix which is really a terrible thing that once you put it in you got to take it out sooner or later and the cost is doubled so we try to put a hot mix in as we as we can so you know and I was wondering if I could just ask Tom to come up just for a, a couple of minutes and run us through the, yeah, sure. the season up till now. If Tom, if you're here with the guys. Good. Follow me. <laughs> if you'll identify yourself for the crowd at home, Tom. Tom Benedetti. I'm the foreman of the Highway Grounds Maintenance Division of the DPW. Um, yeah. Coming out of the winter is... Uh, Definitely hit the ground running. Um, the first thing we need to do um, on the grounds maintenance side is to get the fields prepped and ready for springtime sports. Yep. 
And usually what happens is we have a snowstorm, say the 10th of April, and they want the fields ready by the 15th of April. So it's really a, an impossibility. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do work with recreation and, uh, and try to prep certain things so they can get on the field as quick as they can. Um, that involves irrigation, turning irrigation on, uh, fertilizing, getting the infields ready, clay, working with the clay infields and so on and so forth. So it, it, it's a, it, along with uh, potholes, doing our hot patch program, we now have a hot patch program. We had uh, a team of three guys from the highway division who put out close to 60 ton mm -hmm. just pothole patching with hot mix, which worked out good because we have a plant that's close by and the mix yeah. doesn't get cold. We have Riley Brothers close by that we can run right over. We tarp it, we put a blanket on it, it stays hot for the day, they can go out and hot patch. So we're not wasting money on cold patch that comes out the next rainstorm. Um, lawn damage, we had a lot of that this year. Berm damage, because we didn't get that deep freeze to hold things together. Mm -hmm. So once the plow goes off the road, it does a lot of damage. So uh, a lot of aluminum <coughs> seed and um, clean up, a lot of clean up work, a lot of asphalt berm that we picked up that was mm -hmm. damaged over the winter now tom yes on most of the subdivisions i think we're requiring granite curbing um and that wrecks the plows and also gets chipped and then moves around and grass pops up but does the curbing keep the does the granite curbing keep the sides more intact than than the the vertical granite is the strongest it, it keeps it, it's usually hard to move unless you hit it with a loader or somebody hits it hard with a with a yeah. big truck. Usually, it's usually pretty good on the radius. Is uh, slant. We're granite. using slant granite in a lot of places. Like yeah, slant there. granite comes out pretty easy. Yeah. You know, we've had pieces come out and it doesn't go back in easy. So it's in our planning board rules that the new subdivisions have to, I believe, have the granite curbing at least on one side. No, uh, I think both sides, unless that's so changed. Both, yeah. radiuses, both yeah. radiuses. Both radiuses. Sidewalks on, sidewalks on both sides, but then they wave one. Right, you wave one. But once right. it transitions to a, a Cape Cod berm or, or, or something of that nature, mm -hmm. that uh, if it's not frozen behind it, those plows will pop it right out. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it doesn't take much to damage it if it's not frozen. Is that something we should think about, though? Because we end up owning those roads. Right. Uh, I think the vertical granite on the radiuses is the way to go. It's, it gives you the protection and everything else. Uh, um, and then the transition into a monolithic berm, mm -hmm. one that is part of the road. Right. I mean, it's strong, it's, it's, it's very hard to knock out. I mean, it's- you, Like you really, the school access road. Yeah, the school access road will have the, the, the monolithic berm. Uh, most of your major roads have monolithic berm. Uh, it's strong, it's part of the road. It's not put down separate. Okay. So in this climate, in this, you know, time for, uh, in this uh, area, it's much better application. Okay. Um, sorry, got you off track, sorry. Our uh, transition from recreation and opening day and the, the, the wonderful parade that they have <coughs> and everything, we hit the ground running for Memorial Day. Memorial Day has a, a huge amount of prep preparation work. We, we uh, our highway crew was very significant in getting a lot, a lot done this year. We, uh, we took a whole week, more than a week, about a week and a half, and just did bed work, clean up, edging, mulching. Uh, they put out probably, I'm gonna say another, uh, probably 60, 60 yards of mulch uh, in, pre in preparation for Memorial Day. <laughs> and all the time, we still gotta take care of regulatory signs, signs that get knocked down, um, complaints, we have, uh, we get a good amount of complaints. Once the sun shines and the weather gets better, the complaints come flying in. The people on Village Green are the worst. Really. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard that from many departments. <laughs> but anyway, no, there's not Just one area. one particular house? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's right after the corner there. I think it's yeah. trading or to Millis. <laughs> I was at a cookout the other day, oh, and, uh, and Donna Shaw was there, and I told her that we were going to block off the end of the road, and that's it. <laughs> You know, nobody, nobody in or out. Yeah, so it, it, there, there's a whole, a whole bunch of things, maintenance uh, things that we do, complaints that come in because we're so busy trying to prep for Memorial Day, trying to 
you know, clean up after the winter, trying to stay up with recreation. We're getting behind in recreation now because we spent so much time for Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to have to give Ann, you know, the service that that division mm -hmm. deserves, you know, to keep the fields nice and everything. It's, it's a juggling act. And, and when you have a small crew, and then all of a sudden guys are coming out of winter time and they're saying, oh, oh I could use my vacation time by July 1st. You just, you're missing a guy here, you're missing a guy there, and you're, and you're trying to juggle to try to, to try to get the work done. Bob, what's your headcount compared to four or five years ago? Um, well, when, when, I, when I first came here, um, I think we had like nine guys. Now we're up to about 14. Okay. Th so throughout all of it? Get a or just the highway? Division. Actually, it's not like that. It's um, I think we're we're within one or two. You know what? I gotta add them all up and look at the names to tell you the truth. But yeah. we're we're not far from where we were before. We mm -hmm. reconsolidated and we you know we lost some foremen, right. like five foremen came back with three superintendents. But now you know we're requesting a body here and there, and you've given us the budget to do that. So we're building. Okay. The uh, the grounds division at its peak was. Uh, there were, there were three and a half, I think it was three and a half, we had a split position. Mm -hmm. So I think the crew was three and a half plus myself. And, and we just concentrated on grounds maintenance. And I know the highway side had, uh, I think they had four, four full-timers plus a, uh, and a, no, four full-timers plus the foreman mm -hmm. at the peak. And then... Uh, so we're still not there yet. We're getting closer, right? We're, we're getting closer. We're not there yet. Mm -hmm. And we should probably be... <clears throat> A little more than that with the amount of work we've got to do. Okay. Tom, so is it, was this more all day different than any else? It sounds like, I mean, the same cycle happens, like you said. Yeah. Does, I mean, I know you have budget, but do any kind of like temporary labor? I mean, not kids, but I mean, especially do the looming stuff that's not, it's more labor intensive, not expertise intensive, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. to cover uh, you guys. I mean, I don't know if Bob has, you know, $10 yeah. an hour, five to $8 an hour kids. Yeah, we've, we've done some summer help, college help, but there's, there's always that union issue oh, okay. that we have to be aware of, um, which, you know, the guys have been pretty flexible and, and you know, they step out of the box and say, yeah, okay, let's, let's bring a part-timer in here and there, you know, it helps us out. It's just that if you, if you have a, a large need for part-time help, then maybe it's time you hire someone. No, I agree. Right. I just thought because it's like burst activity, like you said, get in the fields because it's actually the fields and one them over April for April six is the first soccer game. So yeah, you guys are under a lot of pressure. And if yeah. it's bad weather, you know, so I think it snowed. Yeah, and the fields are all yeah, covered. Yeah, so. and we're that's happened before. Yeah, so. and and always, always the schedule changes if we have a burial, mm -hmm. and that's you know everything everything stops. Yeah, and certain guys you need to go do that, you know, and put the care that it deserves into it mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to lose that edge i've oh. worked in cemeteries where it was you know park the truck two feet away from the burial and yeah. you know it's no, a, we don't no, yeah. no we want to make sure this is you know the the corner looks beautiful now thank you Ned, a lot of that was bought great job there just a little disappointing the flocks didn't last till the uh, the parade right you know it looked nice when it was, <laughs> it, when it, it was really booming. did uh that i mean uh, again we have so many designs around town from Lowell Robinson. Yeah. He, he's just amazing. Um, he's he's got a big job right now that he's dealing with, but uh, he he still has time to you know to draw for us and, and check on jobs. We just uh, we just completed or we're, well, we're in the uh, in the middle of completing that second phase of the Pondville Crypt in the uh, Pondville Cemetery. Mm -hmm. All the stone work is done: stone walls, the wing walls. <coughs> That Slash beautiful drawing that uh, uh, Lowell did, and the steel door has been removed to be rebuilt. It's it's really gonna all come together once all those pieces are, you know, put together. Lowell's been one of our best kept secrets in town for years. He's um, an older gentleman that has been a mainstay of helping us in so many ways. He's a terrific guy, and continues sure to do so. So we're very grateful. Uh, may I, Mr. Chairman? Sure. The um, I, for Memorial Day, I thought the town looked terrific, as it always does. Thank you. Uh, your crew does a wonderful job in maintaining it. And it is the crew. They work hard. Yep, I know they do. And um, just, just one question on recreation. Um, and how many, you may not know precisely, but how many of our fields are irrigated? Uh, Pond Street is, is all irrigated. And that's, on, and that's on well? That's on a well. That's, that's uh, 
26 zones, I think. Okay. And uh, we take care of that, a lot of it in-house. We, we have help from Norfolk Irrigation to fire it up. And because we're so busy in the spring, I can't go through every zone right. now. So they run through the zones, and then I kind of monitor it. And the, so the only expense for irrigation would be electrical? Yes. There is no it. other? Same there thing is. with the Town Hill. Right. No, I know Town Hill's on, on, on well. So, but oh. just, I'm asking because there was a discussion regarding costs associated with some of the issues that recreation was dealing with, and the irrigation component came up as a point of discussion. And I think there was a... A misunderstanding in, in the cost because my understanding is they're all on well mm -hmm. any irrigations on well that the town operates and the only cost should be electrical and that would be minimal yeah the maintenance cost would be electrical you know run yep. the front of the pump and everything the uh, the other cost is firing it up in the springtime well but that that's a one time yeah yeah and, yeah. and, and closing and it down right. winterizing yeah. it's a one-time cost yeah. okay. as long as there's no major problem like uh, you know the, the clock goes or gets hit by lightning. We've had yeah. that happen. Yeah. I mean, that can that can run into some money. Uh, I had a problem with uh, with the uh, pressure reducing system there this year. I had to have it replumbed. I mean, but it's not astronomical. Yeah. It's part of maintenance. Yeah. Good. Okay. Are Thank they you. Um, are they all on a rain sensor? So if it's yes. raining, they don't come on. Yes. Great. All right. Anything else? Of course. Uh, not really. Uh, the only other things we add to our schedule are our projects and. Bob's going to talk to you about the walkways, and we have some stone walls being built right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Long Suffering Seacock Street is about to have some work done on it. Yeah, yeah. Both the uh, railroad crossings are going to get it this weekend. Yeah. So that's a pretty good sized project, you know, that's coming together. Thanks to Bob. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. Tom. You're welcome. Thank Thanks you. For the nice to see you. Thanks. Nice to see you. Thank, thank you, your crew you again so for, uh, we appreciate for their work this last weekend. Please. Thank so you want I'll, to? I'll let the guys know. Yeah. Yes. Good. Mr. Uh, Tom, just don't want to, and the library trustees are here too, so I hope they've noticed too. I know you've spent a lot of time with your crew over at the library, um, something we haven't been able to do for several years, so I wanted to thank you for doing that. Um, it looks great. Um, and then the other thing, just before, I know the trustees are here for 7.30. I just, I know Bob's got a long list of things, but um, I want to make sure we vote the Chapter 90 things while he's here um, and provide him the opportunity to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, um, I know Jim was having a question about the balances left in Chapter 90. I, I don't know if you have that with you. I do. The carryover. I know there was a couple of hundred thousand, I think, in there for carryover, wasn't there, Bob? Yeah, um, Jim, it's much more like $450,000. How much? $450,000. Does that include this year's? No, it doesn't. So that's just last This year's and um, there's far less. Um, you know, I can tell you what we uh, our project requests are this year, and you can just subtract that from the 450 uh, uh, I think. Let me go back again so I process right here so we, we've got 400 and some odd thousand of last year's or prior year's funds no, still available right and we've, we're getting if, if the proposal comes through with it with the increase we're going to get 550 somewhere in that range I hear that I, I'm not sure yeah okay well, you're not yeah. you're not calculating anything for that 550 or nothing no okay. so ev everything you're so you're not exp expending any of our new allocation of chapter no. 90 this is all what's in the bank today that's exactly right okay that answers my question thank you okay you have two <coughs> chapter 90 requests in front of us uh, one for intersection improvements and the other way the other one for primary roads right our, what we've done and I've um, went at a bit of a risk because Construction time is just so precious for us. I know the prior director used to wait until July 1st and school was out and so forth, but you got the months of April, May, and June, and it's just a waste if we don't do something. I've put together a couple of project requests, put them in front of you, one being um, to mill and overlay uh, Seacock Street, mm -hmm. which is the phone just won't stop ringing. That street needs it. Um, and the other one I put right under that, was uh, Rockwood Road from the center of town down to close to Boardman Street, which also goes over the tracks. So both these roads have uh, the commuter rail passing over it. So what we did was before we have um, the project, and these are going to get paid out of that, those paving jobs. Right. So the um, jobs that we're doing over the tracks are kind of like the first phase of this construction mm -hmm. because the tracks are uh, governed by the Mass Bay commuter rail, and there was a cost savings doing just the tracks this weekend 20 feet each side of it because they will come out and 
cooperation with us, and they are going to do the digging, and we're going to have a night crew there to pave it in. Yeah. We're going to require uh, detours and, and so forth, but, you know, there's four, 12 divisions of the Mass Bay Commuter Rail, and we got the four divisions that we're supposed to get together. And all that coordination happened, and uh, we finalized it today. We had the chief of police out there. We had just a great participation getting this project together. It's going to be painful Friday night into Saturday morning and Saturday night into Sunday morning, mm -hmm. but between the hours of 10 and 6 a.m. Both nights. Then the railroad tracks are done. <coughs> From there, hopefully the project request will be in, and then I can pay these people. Um, that would be good. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, and so from there, I'm going to schedule. Um, PJ Keating has our contract for milling, and that's the process of just going down and scarifying an inch and a half down into the existing pavement. Yeah. We did some test pits out there, and the only way to mill a street is to find out that you have enough body of asphalt, history of asphalt, and we do. So we're going to go down and mill Seekonk Street and mill um, Rockwood Road from the center of town to Boydham Street. But Seekonk Street is going to go from Main Street all the way down to past Cleveland. Okay. I think it's past Cleveland, where the new piece of pavement is, or mm -hmm. just before Cleveland. And uh, add them both up, and it's the better part of a, a mile and a quarter. After they mill it, we, our time is um, it's, it's critical to have the pavement company come in because that road's going to be irregular, and it's going to be passable, but it's going to be like you've seen it before, yeah. just that rough ride. Aggregate Industries will come in behind that and pave it, and uh, that's one of the project requests that we've combined. The other one is intersection improvements. Mm -hmm. Unless you have any questions about the first one, I time's precious here, so. Uh, Seekonk, the end from T Creek to, to Medfield is also pretty nasty. Um, particularly the closer no. you get to Medfield, it gets. Uh, from Creek to. Top from River Noon Creek, that, you know that? Yeah, yeah Noon Hill area. Noon Hill. Noon Hill. That Noon. pavement's uh, pretty good shape. Um, Maybe it's just like the end I'm thinking of. The very end, there's about 100 yards that we stopped when we did that project. It's been three years now. Yeah. That pavement wasn't in bad shape. We had like this much money. So that's still not finished, that street. It's in binder condition. Yeah. So there's still a top that has to be put on it. But there's still a top that needs to be put on Noon Hill. If we were to top both of those right now, mm -hmm. that would do some damage to this Chapter 90 balance. So we're, that's the way we survive by here. You know, we just look and we react. And so um, you're questions? right there. No, I, you entertain a motion? Any questions? No, I'm okay. good. Yep. I move to approve the uh, Chapter 90 request for 370000 and seventy-four dollars for Rockwood Road and Seekonk. Second. Uh, motion's been made and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. It is a vote. <coughs> all right. The move for the uh, yep. forty-six. Yep. All right. I move that we approve Chapter ninety request for forty-six thousand seven hundred twenty-eight dollars for primary road intersection improvements. Second. second. All right. But motions been made and seconded. Any other discussion? No. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Those no. The ayes have it. It is a vote. All so right. You got your chapter 90. Sure. Um, I consider that to be phase one if you don't mind. There'll be more coming in front of you. I hope so. The new appropriations come to us. Yep. We have Main Street in mind and a few other places. All right. Well, for folks at home, if we do get that new appropriation plus the funds that you currently have, we would, could have the potential of putting in between 800 and a million dollars into our roads this year. Great. Yep. Um, you've been doing some work on this on the uh, crossings. Right. Out front, do you want to sure. talk about that for a couple minutes? What I did was, and I brought a couple of samples. I've, we've been working with um, the planning board and yourselves, as you know, because mm -hmm. the crosswalks down downtown, <coughs> the design, the brick design is just disintegrating on us. We've been filling them in. Tom's been going out there and just patching them with a little asphalt and so forth. But although it's made safer, it now it looks like a mouthful of bad teeth, as I say. So uh, <laughs> it's not very aesthetically pleasing. So we need to replace those. So what Tom did was we went out and we dug out four sections of the brick so we could get down and find out what kind, what tolerance we have. Therefore, I could write a specification. We go out to bid however we want to construct this. These are the things that need to be done. We were hoping to go over your standard cobble. After much discussion, we found the cobble to be the best solution for mm -hmm. something that we won't have to do again in another five years. I uh, won't try to sell that product, but um, but we needed to find out how thick, after we took the brick and the asphalt out down to the, the base of uh, concrete, six inches of reinforced concrete, how much we had. We found out that, if you can't, our original proposal was to put this in. Mm -hmm. This is a, a standard cobble. It's not one that was extracted from uh, 
Boston or any historic value, but it has it was it's made. This here is a sawn cut face, thermal face. It's smoother, but it's too smooth. You'll slip and slide on it. Mm -hmm. This here is a, uh, a, a thermal, uh, I'm sorry, a split face. If I'm not perfect, it's something like that. But anyways, we put this in as an example. You could tell us it was egg white. We wouldn't know either. It's, it's thermal. Okay. So that's my story. So anyways, uh, we put this in. We found out that after we take out the asphalt stuff, this is exact height of the street. Excellent. Bad. Bad. Oh. Very bad, because we need at least an inch and a half or two inches of mortar underneath it. Oh. So that kind of broke my heart. But in the... <coughs> so we come up and we've... We have this kind of cobble. Mm -hmm. Any thinner and I'd be worried. But this is three inches by five and a half by, by five and a half. So you get a little tolerance for a joint. If it was six by six, four of these would equal a square foot and so yep. forth. These are a little bit cheaper. They're thinner. It gives me now that inch and a half. Okay. <coughs> and unless I, you have some questions or some doubts about it, this is going to be the baby, I think. How long? Just you think does it, it have the tolerance? I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I think you got the same question. Does it have the tolerance for heavy heavy trucks? It does. I mean, if this was any bigger, Jim, I right. it would it could be just crack, right. yeah. and then we'd have to look at that. But it's going to be pretty tough to do this. You know, the joints might crack up a little bit, but that's inside the joints. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. if you remember in our budget, you gave us ten thousand dollars right. a year last yep. year to run around and do all these repairs. So, if we have to every three or five years go out and repoint these things like any brick building. Beautiful. <laughs> Okay. The salt's going to do some damage, not to this, but to the joint. And if it does, it we'll would do that anyway, no matter what you put in. Yeah, we'll get out there and sandblast it a little bit. And we'll get it down to where it's good again, and we'll come back and have a professional joint it and so forth. Go so for that's it. it. Uh, yeah. One question <clears throat> on the, the circles. Yep. The brick is flat to the road, right. and it shouldn't be. It needs to pr right. provide a tactile sensation so people don't drive over it. Um, are you thinking of bringing it up at all? You mentioned before uh, the difference between, and I wish I could have jumped in because Tom did a great job explaining the, the vertical curb and the slant granite. Yep. We have the slant granite in the, co in the, in the uh, island areas. We want to take that out and put a vertical granite. We'll have it cut and, mm -hmm. and, and tailored for that uh, radius. But also lift that up in the air. Lift the brick circle up. A right. Bit. Yeah. That's going to be more expensive than uh, your, your average yep. brick walkway because uh, the brick walkway is already formed for us. It has the eight feet with the, <coughs> the straight edge of curb, uh, granite curbing in it. Yep. But this is going to be a little bit more expensive, and I'm thinking that when this project's done, two years are going to go by. Right. I discussed this a little bit with Jack. I mean, we could go at this thing. You, I could beg you for the money and go at this thing and uh, wreck everybody's summer. So I think we just sneak around and we do this thing, and we get one done, and you go like that. We'll go we'll do another one, and maybe this year we can get all the crosswalks done. Yeah. And then we'll take a look at the circles, make sure that we really like what we have, and anywhere along the line... Um, I think we, once we start out on this, you're going to like it, and uh, it's going to be too late to change back anyways because when I buy cobble, i got to buy bulk. Mm -hmm. so we're going to be right about this. But that's what you're, you're right, and Jack and I have talked about this with the chief of police and so forth, and those trucks going around the circle that are just crushing the, that little granite, stuff like that, they got to know that if they don't learn how to drive, they're going to... Yeah, they're gonna have something to worry. Yeah, the about. cars are going straight. Yeah, we had a car yesterday going straight down. Yeah, well, they want to teach, obviously, teach the people to not drive on the bricks. Yeah, in the, in the circles. I have right. a question from the audience. Yes. David uh, Andrews. That was the original design. Mm -hmm. Was to go up. the vertical granite with the sloped brick to it? What do you know? That's news to me. Is that uh, something? For, I Tom's can remember when they were when they were doing the town center. Um, I forget who it was. Jan Conklin didn't her didn't didn't her they, they sh one of her sons isn't he an engineer or something that helped design it? I don't remember, but someone uh, had pointed that out to me that that was originally what's supposed to happen yep. in those roundabouts: vertical granite, brick goes up to the top of it, a truck hits it, it makes his box go like this. Yeah. So he knows he's on it. He's got a be careful and swing wide and right. and cars aren't gonna like you said go straight across john fitch highway put in a, a circle at the at one end of it up in fitchburg and you know it, it comes out perfect it, it has the rays you know not to go there it just makes seems to be yeah, right. slows yeah it slows people down a bit too yeah i mean we used to have discussions with butch about it one <coughs> before they went in and i think collectively we had scaled the scaled it down a little bit because we didn't want to have people flip, flipping over in the center of town either. I mean, to Good learn. Or causing too many flat, you know, flat tires. Yeah, exactly. Um, painful lesson. 
knowing that you you have a schedule to meet, I'm going to buzz through these other ones. Okay. But, uh, and I'm going to talk about them in detail only if you ask. Okay. Um, we have uh, a new school in town. And with that comes a new property and a new you got to figure out how to cut the grasses there and stuff like that, and it's still not fully developed. Not much it, grass there right now. <laughs> there's a lot of grass there. <laughs> but um, the, uh, the contract that we had for lawn care, along with our own in-house forces and stuff like that, was do, uh, Shady Tree, and their mm -hmm. contract was due this year. By right, we, ha we can extend that one year. In doing so, we hope that the school will be fully complete and we'll have a good idea what it is that we can spec out to bid for cutting, yeah. what we want to take on and what we want to give the contractor. So for that reason, we've asked you to sign a, a, a contract extension. Oh, you, it w it's not before you, but we will do that. But I, I just mm -hmm. wanted to bring that to your attention so it's, it's going to be in coming. Okay. That's the uh, little bit about lawn care. Um, I can. I mm -hmm. gave Jack a call the other day. And I just want to bring this to the attention. I never want to surprise you with this, but we talked a little bit about um, a concern that I had uh, with uh, Long Street Bridge. Mm -hmm. And this could go on. This could be a meeting in its own, so I'll, I'll be brief. There's, um, that bridge was built, I think, in 1910 or something like that. Concrete has a life expectancy. Well, actually, it, it gains full strength at 50 years in theory. I don't know what the concrete was back in 1909, but it probably had a gain strength that night um you know i just don't know but it's falling and it's falling apart and the the old steel is 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 exposed now and um i asked jack come on we get in the truck and jack looked at it with us we took some more photos and so forth so just want you to know that that along with some development that's going on in there uh, bad news could turn good uh, um and uh we need to do something about this bridge in the meantime i might and it segues into something else I want to show you. I'm going to have somebody that knows a little bit about bridges go out there and certify that bridge one way or the other. Not to shut it down, but maybe to repost it for less weight or go up there and block this thing and because and, uh, they actually take, you know, timber and go into that water and, and hold mm -hmm. it up and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then it can be passable until we can make a decision how we're going to do or what we're going to do. But I think a, a professional needs to present that better than I. Any questions about should that? You, should you stop traffic now? I don't know. I mean, it sounds to me like something we should know pretty quick. Uh, I mean, yep. if there's a risk, we, we all know what happened recently on a bridge. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if there's any risk to anyone driving over that, uh, as much as we'll get yelled at and you'll get all the letters and phone calls about the inconveniences associated with it, if you need to do that, you know, structural engineer tells you this thing is just not safe. Right. You know, two-seaters only or something like that. Cause, you can post this. It's just my guess, yes. but you can post this. It won't matter. <laughs> you know, pe people will, if they're there, they'll go over it, irrelevant of what the posting says. And that would be my concern, that, that somebody would get hurt here. And I don't think we're at that point, Jim. Okay. Well, I, I don't know. That's why I'm asking I've been on the question. bridges so often and stuff like that, even though I don't. Who, who really knows? And you can get an expert out there, probably going to know less than me, other than <laughs> he's going to find the... <laughs> That's encouraging. How are you, uh, what are you going to do, x-ray it? I, how can you right. tell, you know? I know. So how many bridges? I don't know what the, the, how the Tobin Bridge is doing, but it looks kind of shaky, too. But <laughs> this will choke scares. off a neighborhood, and I don't think we're at that point right now. But I tell you what, I won't waste any time getting um, okay. the We just don't want anybody to That's all. I know you, you would feel it. the same. I mean, yeah. I just. And that segues into water supply, right? It does. And uh, I was in, as part of another thing I was going to talk about is that um, – I've, I've talked about this before. We're looking for new source development. We cited a few places, um, but the most promising one, and we're working with the, with the developer that has a proposal in front of the planning board to develop off of Lawrence Street, that section of land at the better known as the Man, Buckley mm -hmm. Man, Buckley Man property. And uh, I don't want to steal his thunder or anything, uh, how far he's got with the presentation, but he's got a nice layout for uh, some growth up there. And at the same time, I think, if I'm right, if we can, if the planning board can approve a, a, is it open space cluster development, then there'll be enough room for us to, to uh, sink a couple well sites. In the meantime, you've given us permission to access that land, and within the next couple of weeks, we're going to go out there and drill. Mm. We have some reports from before where it was promising, but this time we're going to go out with a four inch instead of a two inch. Mm -hmm. We're going to really test this. Yeah. How, far, how far away from the um, part that's not in good shape? Oh, um, 
I'm not sure the what kept the the contamination. Yeah, it's contaminated so. area. Oh, um, it's been all certified. I think there was there was a brownfield out there. And it's uphill, certified by the DEP, isn't it? DEP, right? It's uphill, and we're okay far enough away. I mean, so right. okay, that'd be good That's, news. Yeah, that yeah it would be. It's nothing happens quickly, so I beg your patience on that. That'll come around. Mm. Now the, we were looking at the Campbell Park is a place. We have a piece of property there right off 115. It's under the jurisdiction of the conservation. We'll go reach in that direction. And then there's a couple of other places. We're looking down by the airport and so forth. And our new superintendent's got a good handle on this. And um, so I'll keep you updated on that. Okay. Um, <coughs> that's it for uh, resource development. The bridges, just to conclude that there is... Um, there was this one time, I think, in this town's history, maybe 20 years ago or 30 years ago, where we must have came across a lot of this corrugated pipe. Right, Tommy? Yeah. Must have got a sale or something going, and uh, they bought all this corrugated pipe, and they used it that year <coughs> within a short period of time because it's all coming apart at the same time. Mm -hmm. There's a couple places, and again, one of the trips I took, Jack, was down to Diamond Street, and uh, Diamond Street is collapsed, and... Uh, it's a culvert. I'm not as concerned as I am with a bridge that spans. This is a, it's got guardrail and it's got a good body of water on each side and it uh, passes quite a bit of gallons. And uh, there was a sinkhole that we saw a while back and it, it came out again. And then we got inside and we took a look at this. We extracted everything and we did a whole, uh, you know, we diagnosed this thing is gone. It's just, uh, we got pictures of it and all that. So that, there's another one just like that down by uh, Myrtle and River near the skating rink. Mm -hmm. And a couple more that I don't, it um, doesn't come to mind. But um, These are full-blown con-con issues, right? You're going to have to go yeah. in with them. and Right. I've, you know, I, again, it's such a long story. One thing uh, segues into another, but um, I want to do, I am in the process of putting together a general NOI yep. with the con, con which will allow me, it doesn't hold up our work. It's a typical type of description that will go in and we'll, we'll rebuild head walls and um, it's encouraged by the DEP, so they shouldn't have any problem, the EPA and so forth. But um, the way I was going to locate these things was you gave us a, uh, an approved project before with the GPS unit, and we have that GPS unit, and we say we're going to go, we're going to go, and then we got a, you know, a new superintendent on and stuff like that. I'm determined to go out there this year, mm -hmm. and over the next three years, GPS this entire town and do an asset inventory with a condition report. Yep. And that's where we're going to find where our problems are. We'll rate them one, two, three, three B in the worst. Bring it up to the top. We'll find out how much money we have to have, and and then we can go attack these these deficiencies. And but I think I want to get the general permit going now because I've been talking the talk and not walking the walk, so to speak. And uh, got the GPS unit, and it's getting cobwebs on it. We got to get out there and do it. In the meantime, I um I want to get that NOI done. Brief description, see if they'll pass it, and I think they will. I've been communicating with them on the side and so forth. So that's where we are with that big picture. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on there. So um, Bob and I happened to bump into the CONCOM chairman when he was in town at the uh, hall one day. Yeah. And, uh, we had this discussion with him, so he knows it's coming. Yeah, well, you went to the CONCOM last year about this and started talking with them. So I did, but they didn't. Um, they didn't bite it. They the needed time. more work on the NOI, and I just, you know. Front Ridge. <laughs> You want to say something about Fern Ridge? I do. Over across the way, the planning board has a meeting tonight, and part of their agenda is uh, Fern Ridge. The developer, Wall Street, over there has, um, in the development stage, probably halfway done through that subdivision. As you know, part of a subdivision development, you, you develop the infrastructure. You bring in yep. the, your utilities, and you pave it to a binder, and you work off the binder, and you build your lots, all that stuff. In doing so, the, con uh, the uh, planning board has negotiated some off-site responsibilities mm -hmm. that uh, it's good for the DPW but when it's identified and it's agreed upon that it's going to be done it then becomes a DPW jurisdiction issue they've done good work to get us uh, upgrades on Holbrook Street with a culvert and a wear and Turner Street with some new drainage and pavement and Winston Road however Turner Street and Winston Road um, you, coming towards the end of the project need to be bonded mm-hmm it's our call. The developer, whether he has a, any financial problems or he just likes to argue these points, um, has come up with uh, proposals 
and I'm kind of saying no to a lot of them. My thinking is, I explained this to Jack, you know, uh, just to put up a house lot for collateral isn't going to satisfy the people on Winston Road when they say, my street needs to be fixed today. Right. What do I do, go to the taxpayers and have them <coughs> put up the money for us? You don't do that. Um, and what are we going to do? Sell the house like get the money, and you know maybe in three years we'll have the money to fix it. So he has to come up with some kind of security that he's going to do what he's um, agreed to do. His proposal, and I want to just run this by you and just get a sense whether you want to just leave it up to me or or give me some good advice. His proposal right now is that he wants to release six lots. He's agreed to only release request three lot release. Planner board can hold on a three, and he will give us. The $15,000 that I need on Turner Street, I identified 18, but he says he get 15. That's good. Um, and there's another uh, 60 something thousand dollars to develop Winston Road the way it's proposed, and he has agreed to do it. He doesn't have that money right now, but what we'd like to do is give us $25,000 and um, go out there and work his way down the street for $25,000, so he's going to do this curbing, and he's going to do the, you know, the sidewalks by November 31st. But at least we have that money in there right now, and if it means movement and working in cooperation and stuff like that, I kind of like it. You don't know this, but I saw I the saw email. The, after I saw the email late today. Yeah. yeah. So to me, I think it's a it's a good thing. If you uh, have any questions or or I, I want to be careful Gary. what I say here. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. Doesn't our bylaw require that offsite mitigation be completed before the lots are released? I don't know if the bylaw does. The order of conditions are pretty clear. The same, permit same does. Thing. I think the they permit does. I think the that's other. the requirement. Right. So uh, my view would be that you follow the requirement, <laughs> that it gets done or it gets fully bonded. Um, I, I just think that you need to be very deliberate about what our expectations are, and you need to be very firm about ensuring that the appropriate funding is there before we give away these lots. Let me um, bring something else up. Would uh, you guys have um, um, the order of conditions says that he <coughs> has identified the work that he owes us. The order of conditions does not specify that he has to give us a bond for Winston Road or Turner. Mm -hmm. It does specify in the order of conditions that we can demand a bond name the price and change it at any time this guy's quick to go to court and that's what could be facing us doesn't bother me just want to let you know i think um maybe we should talk about this on the side get some uh, you know well, we went to the le I mean, got legal he, advice i'm i'm never may mr Chairman, i'm never a fan to to run to court i mean that's usually a, a lose lose kind of situation and people that make the money don't work for us or someone else but in the same vein um, you, you've got a little bit of history that we need to pay attention to and uh, I, I may be wrong and I'm not on the planning board but I thought that we had an, a requirement as part of the permitting process that this off-site work had to be done and, and that especially on that area that Winston Churchill area that has been a source of concern from day one on this project. I mean, that has been a hot point. And um, I, th I think we need to be very firm in assuring that those issues are addressed as quickly and correctly as possible. That's just my opinion. Scott? No, I, I agree with Jim. I mean, I think. Because th then you're just chasing after them all the time, and it puts you in a tough spot. And, and like I said, I've watched some of the planning board meetings too. It hasn't been easy, so I would stick to what we're allowed to stick to and get the bond you feel comfortable with. Make sure the money's there. They've already released a bunch of lots, haven't they? Didn't they right. take a vote to release yeah. some? Yeah, yeah, and the horse did. is out of the barn on that respect. Um, well, <clears throat> we don't have a decision. Nope. Other than to we do not. Bob. Um, so. Get the best deal you can. <laughs> Most money you can. And we're the bear in the closet who would be very unhappy if these things don't get built. But uh, okay. I, I know how tricky these are with the land siting boards, the negotiation that has to happen. Sounds like you know what I'm talking about before oh, yes. I mentioned it, so mm -hmm. you have some background. I just want to know that we have good legal standing. 
don't want to go and lose. Well, I, I just I think you you have leverage. Okay. And I, I think you need to use it. <laughs> um, My opinion. So I hate to you know, and I don't want to make a mistake in like a five minute rush yeah. too. So uh, let's talk about this again as this thing goes on. We can always, if, we end, if we end this meeting, we can always go over and join the plane. And yeah. Listen to the phone. Good. Well, well I, I mean, people are waiting, so well. it, that's a nice comment. But I, you know, we, we have to stay arm's length, and you know, our input is to Bob, and um, stay arm's length from another board. Did you have anything else? Uh, just quickly, we have uh, made an in, uh, a, a free investment into the uh, Norfolk County engineers to do some survey work out on Lake Street. Right. And I just wanted to real quickly let you know that uh, nobody's forgotten Lake Street. It's taken this long. It started in the winter time. And because there is not much foundation, that's a uh, baseline foundation, it's kind of like a figure of speech, for them to go on. So they had to go out to Main Street. They had to come into our archives. They had to go into the backyards and find um, house points and bring them to the street. So finally, we've got, it, we've got it done. This is a smaller version. Thank you very much, Jack. <laughs> you can see. <laughs> and there are no huge surprises there. Um, Just one no. on the corner. Just, yeah, there's um, some layout challenges, but uh, for the most part, I'd say 90%. That road's fitting nice in there the way it is right now. What I'd like to do is go out. Um, we promised the people for a meeting. I thought it might, might be a good idea to bring them indoor one more time b instead of being out in the dirt road and leaning yeah. over the hood of a car and uh, who's going to be able to really see it and stuff like yeah, that. And that's um, a good idea. If it Mr. requires... <laughs> Your you know, turn. Do we have a gavel in the closet? I have one upstairs, <laughs> We no, we could do this with a quorum, or we could do this um, no, I, I in my office with one of you guys or two of you, you know. Let's, uh, let's schedule them in. Yeah, I mean, it's been public to this process. Why, okay. why change? Um, okay. Just one quick thing. Sure. Uh, Fox, Ra Fox Run, have you seen their sign on Park Street? All big trucks, please go down Maple Street. They're directing their construction traffic off Warren. I think it's Warren. Warren's the one on... on Did you see this? It's a hand spray painted sign. Yeah, I just saw it myself. Yeah, they're sending construction traffic down down from Rentham. Yeah. From Rentham Pave. I don't know the name of that street. But Rentham Pave and, and whatever street that is. I mean they rebuilt the street and they got the base on it, so they're, they're telling people to use the Maple Street entrance for truck traffic, but they have their own main entrance right there on the Yes, they right do. There. Exactly. So oh okay. I, when did this this must happen? It's been up for about a week or two. I saw it for I the first time this weekend. Ago, I, yeah. I saw it too. It's, it's on the Rentham end. You have to be coming it's from. It's just Rentham. a spray painted sign on a piece of plywood. Yeah. Right on it. Yeah. I know you want to talk truck exclusion. Can we talk that another day? Sure. Okay. The library commissioner, sir. Getting antsy. One, one, one last quick thing. I'm going to be asking you to take a look and consideration in the future. This is called the Mass Municipal. I mean, this is called a uh, Municipal Infrastructure Report. Mm -hmm. It was um, done for another town. Mm -hmm. I'd like to do one for this town. How much? I don't know. I'm going to say 30 grand. Mm -hmm. But this is going to, um, this is a report that's going to tell us about our infrastructure beyond what I've, um, when I'm talking, I'm just talking about survey and doing a rating and stuff like that. This is a, uh, an engineer's intelligent report with uh, a, a description of all our assets and uh, Another time when you when we when you have some interest in more time and stuff like that, I like to describe to you. I think I might have mentioned to you briefly, stuff. But it's almost like you can't live with it. Good you project for a planner. Uh, you just took the words out of my mouth. Um, you know, one of the things a planner is going to need is as much data yep. about what our capabilities are in all regards. And um, you know, hopefully, we're going to get that planner on by the January first yep. with a little bit of luck. Um, that's a project I think that would be well suited to begin. Yep. This is really good stuff. I'm sure Thank a good planner would recommend it. <laughs> well, you, you briefly said, uh, I th and I told me today, the school initiated a process for a sidewalk, a grant on oh, yeah. potentially on Boardman Street. Uh, so that's a... Uh, There's a safe route to school uh, grant out yes. there. And, um, uh, no, they're across the hallway, oh. ma'am. Oh, yeah. Planning board? Planning board's down the hall. After looking at the schools that we have in the town yep. and exploring the possibilities and having the grant people out at my office last Friday, along with a, a resident that uh, works for the DOT, has interest in that town on our behalf, 
this the uh, after you do a matrix of things and find out where the sidewalks are really uh, most valuable Boardman Street top the charts yeah down to because if you think about the Freeman's got the access road with the right. sidewalk now it's got sidewalks everywhere how far down would you this go this would complete Freeman Street and it's very attractive to them uh -huh. the all the way down to Seekonk could do anything for King Street. So that would require going down, doing the right thing. The grants goes up to a half a million dollars. Um, it might, it would require where need be laying out the road, just like the county engineers did. Maybe doing some takings and easements yep. and stuff like that. Very um, classy. one, at least one wet crossing. Right after the the ninety degree turn the at Hoover. Water crossing. Yeah, one water crossing. Uh, yeah, that, that, that'd that be a concern. It's just that do we have enough room to put a sidewalk yeah. in and, and keep kids elevated and off the street? And, uh, you know, that's That'll be interesting. That Great. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob, Bob, thank you. Yeah. Certainly would be a popular place to have a sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> well, it depends who you ask. I, and we've had that discussion as well. I, I think we're going to get Our Board of Library Commissioners is here. Um, uh, Mr. Nelson, come on up. And is this Mr. Hill, the new guy? Okay. The proposed new guy. So we're losing a longtime member of the, the trustees. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Harvey Boulay uh, submitted his resignation, uh, I believe, last week. Yep. Uh, so our three-member board currently has two members on it. <laughs> Myself, Ken Nelson, and uh, Kum Kum Parit Malik. Uh, so that created a vacancy on the board. I believe Harvey uh, had one more year remaining on his current term. Uh, so what we'd like to be able to do is fill the remaining year of his term uh, with uh, an appointee and uh, the person that uh, we would like to see appointed to the board is Mr. Gwen Hill and uh, Mr. Hill uh, has lived in our town for uh, close to 20 years mm -hmm. um, he uh, uh, developed an interest in town government through work uh, he met uh, Kathy Elder uh, worked with Kathy Elder and uh, she lured him into uh, serving on the uh, library strategic planning group. Oh. I believe it was probably six, seven years ago. 2006. 2006. So that's how he developed his interest in the library. Uh, he's been a patron of the library. He's taught classes at the library. Uh, and he's very interested um, and in the short time that we've got to reconnect, I'd say uh, he's probably borderline passionate <laughs> about serving the committee on the uh, Board of Trustees. So we would like to have him appointed to that term. Okay. Um, would you like to say anything before we grill you mercilessly? Uh, I'm happy to be grilled. Uh, I just uh, appreciate the opportunity to appear before uh, you ladies and gentlemen this evening so that I can tell you about myself, answer any questions that you may have, and express, again, my interest in serving on uh, the Board of Library Trustees. Excellent. Uh, any questions? I, I, I know of Mr. Hill. We, you may not remember, but we met back when you were on that committee, and, and I know of your passion. And uh, I spoke Thank with you. Harvey, uh, who has been a longtime friend. Uh, I'm thrilled that you've come forward. Thank you very much. I think it'd be a terrific addition to the board. You have big shoes to fill, but I suspect yes. you will fill them very well. Mm -hmm. I, they are enormous shoes to fill. Um, you, you will be a great contributor. Mr. Hill does remember you, and he spoke of you on that. Oh, my goodness. We <laughs> hope it was good. <laughs> it was all good. Good. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming forward. Thanks very much. My pleasure. Okay, hi, Colin. How are you? Hi, Scott. Uh, How's John? Uh, I see you walking well. all the time. I'm glad to see you back out there. Yes. Now, are you, you going to run then, too, when the term is up? I assume that's correct. That would be my plan. Um, I, uh, retirement, uh, I was forced to retire. Uh, I have a uh, tumor in my spine. Um, retirement does not agree with me uh, mm -hmm. very well. Uh, one of my We have passions. lots of boards. Lots yeah, of boards. Say, if I'm you find yourself bored with just the library. <laughs> Guns a technology expert, too. I'm thinking all that security, data security. So I was thinking I'm surprised we haven't recruited am, uh, for something like that. I yeah. was 10 years at uh, Northeastern University as a director of information technology yeah, and identity services. Oh, Northeastern. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, it's all the ideas we could use for it. Like you said, just one board's not enough. 
enough, but it would be, I'd be happy to have his library. Also trustee. served on the security committee uh, for the Freeman Centennial School. I don't know if you know, but everybody walks around with uh, their identification yep. card now that yep. came as a uh, from our committee. Uh, well, we thank you for your help. Yeah, thank you that's great, much. Mr. High pleasure. We see him as a, an asset. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Putting in something hmm. that we don't have, which is not an expert on information systems yeah. mm -hmm. plus mm -hmm. security. Because mm -hmm. yeah, you got the sales, I use sales all the time. That's all. <coughs> everybody do everything electronically. That's so just great. great. This means my book fines will be imposed now. Is that the idea? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're we're going we're going after you, oh, Jim. No, just, so we use yeah. influence. I was with my nickel. I can't. I can't stand to even see a nickel on my account. I was. She's like, oh no, right away. Like, I bet I got you. Worst defender on the board. I know. Yeah, I'm you're not, not the worst, worst defender on the board. board. I know that. <laughs> I sit in no judgment. Mm. <laughs> I, I view it as keeping the library going. Um, those extra fines. So I don't have a question, Mr. Hill. Other than, are you involved in healthcare? Because apparently that's a prerequisite for being on the, the committee. But um, I mean, you're both in healthcare. It was a minor joke, a very small one, uh, which didn't go over very well. I didn't know what he meant. I didn't know where you're going with that, Rob. So <laughs> as a customer, Rob of healthcare, uh, I have had uh, plenty of experience. He's on the other side. He's yeah. receiving it. Well, that, that's Mr. Garrity is heavily medicated. Heavily this medicated so. this evening. Yeah, yeah. So I um, I would entertain. Uh, now this is going to be a joint vote of both right. groups, and it will be for the year, um, which incidentally for, fills out Harvey's term. Um, so I would entertain a motion from the Board of Library Commissioners, um, or trustees, I'm sorry, uh, as to filling the seat. Well, we would like to have uh, Mr. Glenn Hill uh, appointed to the Library Board of Trustees to fill out the uh, remaining year's Stop. term on uh, Harvey Boulay's uh, term. Excellent. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Lehan seconds. Is there any dis the motion's been made and seconded? Any further discussion? No. No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those nay. The ayes have it. Uh, welcome. Welcome Thank aboard. You. Thank you very much. Oh, Don't forget to get yourself Most sworn please. in. Please. Yeah, that, Excellent. Good. Thank you, Scott. It's so well, great to see you. Spare you. Scott and I are old friends from the uh, I'll shake hands twice, once for Mr. Garrett. Yeah. You don't oh. do, you don't want to very good. Thank very you. good. Thank you. So, thank Still you very much. You're always out there walking, right? Yes. Thanks so much. Yes. yes. Thank Thanks you very much for the see opportunity you. to yes. appear. Mr. Nelson, always a pleasure. All right. You're doing a lovely job with the library. You really are. It's so different. I moved to town in 94, and the vast difference is impressive. You could open all day Sunday if you could collect his fines. I'm telling you. You're working on it. Thank you very much. Sorry for the delay. Nice to see you all. Thank you again. Nice Thank you again. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Good night. That's, that's a great appointment. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, he has a lot of knowledge. He's terrific. Terrific. Senior Hathaway. Sir. Uh, we have some contracts to vote. We do. We have uh, we have an office supply contract uh, that we have procured through Surge. Mm -hmm. uh, that's our regional procurement group, and uh, we're going back to W. B. Mason. Uh, <coughs> so we're asking you to approve the contract from July first, two thousand thirteen, to June thirtieth, two thousand fifteen. Uh, we get a discount of 76.52% on office supplies and 51.52% on ink and toner cartridges. So moved. Second. Um, motions were made and seconded. Is that discount off list? It's a discount off the catalog that they provide us. Ah. So it's, uh, I can I probably tell probably you that it's pumped up. Because, I mean, that's a big discount if that's yeah. Yeah. But either way, the bid it up and get a good Staples, I will give you as an example, when we had Staples had a similar discount, uh, when you went to the Staples store, you ended up paying about the same price that we paid. Oh, it's excellent. Not, it's not dramatically different. Uh, Sounds like this. Yeah. Looking at that number. Like yeah. that. So a motion has been made and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. It is a vote. Uh, in addition to office supplies, actually, uh, oh, so Please vote to award the paper contract for a 12-month period beginning July 1st, 2013 to W.B. Mason Company Incorporated for prices shown on the attached award sheet. So moved. Second. Mr. Hathaway, are we making any dent on our paper use? Um, I don't have those facts in front of me, Mr. Uh, Garrity. Um, the got energy be cheaper for this board. Yeah, it's well. We, everything is electronic here now. Well, he's outsourced the paper expense for this board. <laughs> <laughs> We're all printing from home now. Um, it's just something interesting to think, uh, that I'd That's be interested in. I can seeing. get you some uh, the stats that I have off the copy machines. And 
Okay. Pictures. All right. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. <coughs> Any other discussion necessary? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. It is a vote. Uh, please vote to award the DPW supplies to vendors listed on the attached sheet for a 12-month period commencing 7-1-2013. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Uh, any other discussion? Any questions? Comparable with last year's contract, Jack? They are very comparable. Okay. Motions are made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. And please vote to award the water and sewer treatment chemicals to vendors listed on the attached sheet for a 12-month period ending commencing commencing 7-1-2013. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Um, any update on the chemical composition of the water vis-a-vis -vis leaks? There's nothing new? Uh, no, we've made a change, what, two years ago? Mm -hmm. So we're going with the uh, ortho polyphosphate, which uh, didn't give us the oh, same, oh, the odor, I'm sorry. I misunderstood the question. Uh, no, no update. The DEP still. Uh, I thought that was your question. No, it wasn't. But that's a good oh, question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Yeah. What about that bleach smell, Jack? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies, Mr. Chairman. I thought that was your question. Well, that's a good question, Mr. Lee. So no, no update there either. Well, we're not changing the chemicals, and there's no update from the, no relief from the DEP as far as the odor. Are we still getting that one outlier test that keeps? Coming up, um, we have not tested positive. Uh, okay. So for it's, good. it's over six months now. I don't know what. Oh, that's good. All right. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Well, no. Guys, have it. And finally, we have approximately sixty uh, bollards. Uh, about sixty. Sixty. Yeah. I went out and counted them today because I was uh, there was I had some people telling me one hundred and fifty three and some people telling me about. 60, and uh, the 60 has it. Uh, so we have 60 bollards at the DPW that uh, Department of Corrections is willing to take uh, off. Uh, and I, unfortunately, I can't tell you the price, but they're going to pay us the price that we paid for them. Mm -hmm. um, so they've asked us to uh, vote them new ba bollards as surplus property to be sold to the Department of Corrections. Now, where does that money go? Um, that's up f for your... Uh, it should be general fund money. It's, it's probably going to have to go to the general fund. Yeah. Um, I don't think, you know, it's, uh, there will be an argument as to move it back to the uh, project. I don't, I don't think legally we can do that without an appropriation from town meeting. Right. So. But we're not talking about oodles of money. These are concrete bollards that are, I actually took a picture of them if you want to see them uh, on my phone. That's going to ask what a bollard is. Just it's it's the back. thing so that. You know, drive into the school. Oh, it's at that. Okay. Yeah. Things that you know, in front of uh, Walgreens, yes. uh, they're it's not as pretty as the Walgreens yeah, ones, yeah. but all are. And apparently, the original design had sixty plus bollards, and we decided not to go with that. Yeah, the the, the architect really went overboard on the. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I, just want to so the I will. Really so moved. Down. I will move to sell to the Department of Corrections. Second. Okay. All those in favor, uh, motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? Just to be clear, you're going to motion to declare them as surplus. Declare them surplus. So, so, so stated. Like. Oh, I apologize. That's okay. Just never uh, that. Made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. We're surplusing 60 bollards. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. That's our action items. Uh, so discussion items, We uh, one of the things that was requested for us to talk about was the Board of Selectmen liaisons, uh, and I think uh, a list has been distributed, and uh, hopefully you guys came back with uh, your top ten requests, and uh, we'll go from there. Top ten. Well, um, Mr. Bugby. Well, I, I said I was good with what I had, but I offered to trade this out this evening for, with Mr. Lehan, so uh, I'm willing to trade him the uh, KP schools from the Fox schools. Oh. I'll keep everything on there unless someone else wants to That's agree. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Lehan wants public safety off of me. I do. <laughs> it's going to cost you. What do you want? <laughs> I, I really want CPC. I know you've had CPC for quite some time. Uh, you got it. <laughs> Twist his arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got a deal. Should ask for CPC. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it, should I hold out a little longer? <laughs> you could have. Uh, you know, public safety is very attractive. Uh, 
Good luck. Hosting. Good luck. <clears throat> All right. So other than that, we want to um, – now, you mentioned moving the Capital Outlay Committee. Uh, it just it, – traditionally, it has gone with the chair. It doesn't matter. I, I don't have a mm – -hmm. I mean, I'm perfectly happy to – keep everything else the way it is if you want or I'll, what if you have something on my list you'd like that's fine uh, I'll, I'll take capital outlay that's fine okay um. <coughs> all right so you got three of the majors you know there's like the majors and the minors he's prepping for his uh, re-election campaign huh <laughs> <laughs> see if anybody's paying we edit attention. that is there a seven second delay okay mm -hmm. um so i move no Yes, I will move the liaison list as amended this evening, which removes capital outlay and CPC and Norfolk schools from Mr. Lehan, adds public safety and King Philip to Mr. Lehan, adds CPC and capital outlay to Mr. Garrity, removing public safety, and to Mr. Bugby, uh, removes King Philip and adds Norfolk. Second. Any more discussion? All right. All those favors, say aye. Aye. Yeah. Opposed, no. Yes, yes, thank you. You get that, my gravelly tone. I got it. <clears throat> uh, the 2013 and 14 goals. I was asked to <coughs> add this to the agenda. Just I think again to uh, prime the pump. More of a June. Yes, prime the pump. Exactly. More of a June discussion, but uh, to start the juices flowing for hearty discussion in June. But. Would you like us to uh, submit our thoughts for the next meeting? Yeah, I think, um, and we should keep in mind that what we're talking about, I mean, these are the Board of Selectmen goals. They're kind of different from Jack's goals. Do we have last year's? We should look at that. I mean, I have to look at my yeah. last year's. Okay. Can you recirculate? Mm -hmm. I think. And see how oh, I'm sorry. I thought she, I thought she snuck I them in. I didn't see them in the past. They're not in the My apologies. I have them. That's all right. Just send them out. I have them. I got, I got them anyway. So these are the writ large goals. Yeah, but we had like, I'm just curious to see where, how we're tracking and what we, hmm. you know, what we had, you know, uh, Town Hill, Town Hall. Well, we, we settled Town Hall. Yeah, there we go. As you settled. All right, so we will have, um, we'll have lists, preliminary lists for the next meeting on June 11th. Excellent. The next item is comments. Uh, we had a request from uh, a gentleman, Mr. Fallon, who ran for a constable, um, to be appointed as a as a constable. There is provision in general law that allows the selectmen to appoint uh, constables uh, as necessary. Um, I had discussions with town council about this, and, there, and Rob and I looked at the general laws as well. I think there was, uh, you know kind of as typical with general laws, they're not crystal clear, but it certainly seems to have, um, it's, it's an either or. So either you have a, uh, an election process for constables, which we obviously do, um, or, you, or you, you appoint them. You would then go to an appointment, appointment process. And short of there being some critical need for us to have uh, a, a, an increased number of uh, constables, uh, town council felt that we really should um, the spirit of the of the general law seemed to be that it should be neither or, and, and we should, unless we're going to change from the elected, we should stick with the elected uh, constables that we have in place. Because I would be hard pressed to argue that we that we two is not enough for us uh, these days. Mr. Um, I appreciate the request. Uh, you know, it's always nice to have people volunteer to become involved in the process, but um, we have traditionally had an elected process here in the town. Uh, we had the election, the people spoke, and, and I don't think we should, uh, unless there's some urgent need, which I don't think there is, I don't think we should be doing anything different than what the voters stated. Yeah, I would stick with the, you know, the either or, and it's, again, it goes against what we've had in the past, and I don't, if a need came up, obviously we could revisit this at any time anyway, so I don't think we put ourselves on a spot, and I think it, um, the either or to me is pretty clear. Yeah, I thought the statute was pretty clear. We were going to, you either elect them or you appoint them, period, so. Um, yeah, and it would be hard to say no to the next person that came out wanting to be appointed as well. You know, if we made an appointment now, we have three, then someone else says, I'd like to be appointed as well. I, and I, even if the statute weren't clear, I think there's a, a component of past practice that has to be part of the consideration in this, too. And, and, mm -hmm. and we've, we've always elected that position. Um, and 
we just had that election. <laughs> yeah. And we need to uh, honor that election. Well, it's kind of a colonial vestige, the way it's drawn. It's funny, 98% of what they do is really for private. They post the warrants for us, and that's about all you ask of a constable. But, but we should respond. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I will call Mr. Fallon. Uh, expiring appointments. In our packets is a list of appointments that are c coming up for reappointment. We're not going to do that tonight, are we? No, I think we will. We'll contact everybody to see if they're interested. But uh, uh, again, this was just to start you thinking during for the process, and uh, if there are people that there, Marion has made a couple of notes of people who either have resigned or are not interested. I can add a uh, couple of people have contacted me as well that they're not going to be up. I can I'll show that. Yeah. So for the folks at home, um, a great majority of our committees are actually appointed and not elected. And it runs things the gamut from the Historical Commission to uh, the Insurance Advisory Committee and the Municipal, Housing, uh, Municipal Affordable Housing Trust. These are all appointments of the Board of Selectmen. And um, we uh, they're staggered terms, usually a three-year term for most of these positions. And uh, there's two or three people up from most of the boards. So if you have a hankering to serve the community, this is a great way to start. You just come into us and say, I'd like to do this. And most likely you'll get on because we have a dearth of people sometimes. So We do. And people can, con if, you can if you don't want to contact Selectman directly, certainly can call Marion or myself in my office. Yep. Um, for the Board of Registrars, we will need to send a letter to the, the appropriate town committees, the two political Correct. committees, and ask for their three recommendations, I believe it is. Okay. Anything else on that, gentlemen? Nope. Right, moving on. Um, I forwarded you, and I have a couple of copies if you need it, if you want to look at it. Um, I wasn't going to go into the detail, um, but the fire chief sent out a... Susan would like a copy. Susan so, so would minutes, really please. like a copy. Mr. Hathaway. Ooh. Thank you. Huh. Not sure she's going to work out. Does she work for you? <laughs> <laughs> um, you may not get a vote, Mr. Hathaway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the fire chief has uh, shared that with us. Uh, what he's he's obviously this is we're talking about the callback uh, program that is related to when the uh, when an ambulance is committed. Um, he's given us some historical data. Um, he's, he's obviously reviewed that um, thoroughly and, uh, and believes that uh, he, bottom line is he'd like to come in and talk to us. And I think mm -hmm. uh, I'll uh, try and schedule him in at one of our uh, upcoming June meetings and uh, he can share his uh, insights on uh, now that he's had a little more information to look at and uh, what he's seen. I know, uh, you know, one of the concerns that he certainly has, uh, um, even with his best intentions, is he's still having trouble getting people to respond to the callback. So it's a, it's a catch-22. Um, so uh, bottom line is I think we'd like to have Cole come in at one of our June meetings just to give us an update on that program and, uh, and as we had discussed with him at one point to talk about 2014 and, and trying to carry this program forward because mm -hmm. I know that you I, myself, and you all had uh, some, some know it's an important project. Uh, so I will schedule that for you. Anything any, either of you would like to add? Okay. Um, final item on the agenda for discussion items was just, uh, um, I think, the annual town meeting recap, and there may be different things coming out. Of, I mean, I think we want to talk about we may want to have some discussion about town meeting in general. Susan, I have a copy of this that I'm handing out for you. Oh, that's terrific. Thank you, Jack. Um, all kidding aside, Sue has been a great addition to uh, our team upstairs. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I wouldn't heckle her if she wasn't doing a great job, and she's absolutely doing a great job. You're trying to get out of that one, aren't you, Jack? Yeah, I'll pay for it. It's, uh, um, what I've handed out, uh, I know one of the things we want to talk about is just the warrant process the, and the submission of warrant articles. Um, so I was 
looking at the Board of Selectmen policies for another reason, and I bumped into this and reminded me that we do have a policy in place. Um, so um, if we will uh, we need to set a deadline and, and stick to it, and, and we need to convince uh, people to uh, stick to it. And uh, one of the things I know Rob and I had a discussion about was just uh, uh, whether or not we want to kind of go back to the old our old process of having zoning articles in the fall and, and you yeah, know I guess that's the limit is, is putting zoning articles in the fall and, and trying to do financial articles as much as possible in the spring um, anything else I guess we could do either way but uh, I think the zoning articles in the spring and fall does get problematic because right now we're gonna you know it, when Marion gets back we'll uh, we'll set the deadline for the fall town meeting and it will be fairly short mm -hmm. It'll be in the months of July or August that the articles will be due. And um, now that now that zoning just did a whole bunch of articles, they probably don't want to get together and do them again. Right. But that's their decision. Right. This will train them to make sure that they do it right next year. They'll have all year to work on their fall articles. Yeah, we just can't have. I mean, we had two months after the deadline this year. We were still making. Well, that's two issues to the yeah. to the articles. Yes. And, uh, we can't. We can't do that. The um, rather loose uh, article drafting has got to be cleaned up. Mr. Lehan? Put that as a goal. Well, um, <laughs> I, I too spent some time talking with Jack, thinking through how our town meeting went, and um, but, you know, it's no one's fault. I mean, you know, so this isn't meant to reflect any. I mean. We're all volunteers, and, all, and our time is precious in many respects, uh, and people donate a lot of time to, to try and help work their way through. It, it, there was a time, I think, uh, about 10.30 on the first night where I just wanted to raise my hand and say, if any of you are wondering why we need a planner, hmm. have you been watching? <laughs> I, I mean, we've got to bring this process together, and we're all amateurs at this. So, I mean, I think the planner being in place will make a huge difference and and trying to coordinate this entire mm -hmm. process that we have around our zoning bylaws um, <coughs> but I, I strongly advocate for let's set the guidelines let's uh, we're we're our own offenders so we, we're the ones that have you know can't blame anybody else if we open the door it's our fault not theirs mm -hmm. so um, I say let's let's stick to it and if, if it's a day late it's a day late it waits and, and that's the only way the process will work and I feel badly when you see council having to, I mean, we all were posted that night <clears throat> and met with the advisory board, and we're getting information at 6 o'clock, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, right. the night of town meeting because council, and, you know, and everybody gets mad at council, but the truth is council gets it at 1130 yeah, yeah. and has to get it back by 12. And so we, we perpetuate the problem, and we just have to stop it. Yeah. And it'll be painful at first, but... It's, it's, it's just, we can't c continue like this. Any thoughts? I'm okay. No. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so Marion is very good with structure. So I'm going to have Marion be the enforcer of the Warren article deadline for the fall town meeting. And I don't think it would hurt if we each contacted our respective liaison committees and remind them that we're going to make yep. this straight out a little better. Do you have, may I, Mr. Chairman? Do we have, you say when Marion comes back, you must have a pretty She'll good feel tomorrow. for, you must have a pretty good feel for when you think the warrant time frames will be. Um, we, see. We haven't set a date for fall time. Well, that's my, yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Is there, I mean, is there a reason why we can't do that? No, we could. And then we can back up from there. I um, mean, that. Well, it wasn't on the agenda. That's true. It would be, we don't have to set the, we don't have to vote on the date. It would be, well, maybe by the next. The question is, do we want a November one or, yeah. or a little earlier in October? <clears throat> We've been turning toward November. I'm going to pull up my calendar. Although in previous years, I thought we've done October. Oh, we've done more November than October, I think. Yeah, we got out of the, no the November. The October ones were, and that's when I first started, was very difficult just because the, the article deadline is like you know july 29th and then part of summer it's tough yeah when you when you get out of town meeting in may and then ask somebody ask all the yeah. committees to that doesn't work very well um 
If you do a Tuesday, uh, th Thanksgiving is the 24th. <clears throat> so you could do the 8th or the 15th. What's Veterans Day? Oh, that's October. Sorry. Sorry. November uh, November 11th is a Monday this year. So right. Mm -hmm. That's Veterans Day. Day. So you so could do... So 19th? You could do the 19th. Yeah, because Thanksgiving is the last... Oh, it was the last Yeah, it's Thursday, late. Right? It's the 28th. 28th. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to vote it, but if, if we at least right. set as a target date, Marion can then work yeah, the schedule backward, and then we could vote the schedule. Well, yeah, let's uh, bring this, uh, put this on the July, uh, June 11th agenda. We'll do that. Uh, it could be worse, guys. Uh, Framingham, on night 10 of their <laughs> town meeting, uh, adopted stretch code. But Framingham's an RTM. It's a representative town meeting, so you know these folks know what they're getting into. Um, that being said, they also have better information because you know, they know what's, you know, who the members are and who's coming. A town of fifty-five thousand with an RTM that had about one hundred and eleven people showing up. What's what would get any idea what the full RTM would be? I don't know. I don't know what it is. It sounds awfully low. I mean, I. Uh, Sounds like there's a lot of vacant seats. If I so that it. explains the smile on your face today. Yeah, so we shouldn't no, feel too bad about two nights. I was happy. Yeah, right. I'd love to live in a town eleven nights of town meeting. Woohoo! Yeah. Gets me out of the house. Here, Sue, I have something real. Uh, Thank you. Just this is just for. I showed it to Rob today, but it's just uh, something I pulled off uh, the MMA website today, which <laughs> talks about town meetings and how many there are and how many are representative versus uh, open and. Uh, when the earliest one was and the latest the latest one was scheduled for june 24th out in monroe so monroe. rob if you're interested you can go to town meetings almost every night of the, of the june week. i missed i'm i'm sad that i missed deluxeberry so i have a friend who's a, a selectman in watley i think you pronounce it and it's a western town they do their town election after their town meeting and they do it for a couple of reasons. One, you know. One's obvious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you yeah. you get a bunch of rookies at your town meeting, yeah. possibly. Which and, and it had nothing to do with what's on that warrant. Right. I, you, you know, you think about a selectman in his final year. He works all year to get the budget up, and then he's sitting in the crowd mm -hmm. when they actually possible. debate it. Yep. Um, but the other reason is if you're going to end up with a Prop 2.5 override, you don't have to do a special election. True. Because you'll just do that on your regular town election. Yep. So I think it makes some sense to think about um, yeah, the only the only challenge with that, and, and it can be overcome, is that you you got to have you either have to be very to have to, the, what your last point there about the having the override. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be after town meeting, you have to have thirty days, right? Thirty, I think it's thirty-five. 35. But, um, May sixth, right? June so it can 15th. be done, but it's or you can have them closer and just the select mode. And advi finance committee would figure out a override, and it may or may not pass town meeting. And then you may or may not have a useless uh, ballot question. Yeah. So True. Just, just for point of clarification, in some in case someone just tuned in in the last 12 seconds, <laughs> we are not talking about an override. We're talking about the process of the election and town meeting timing. Yes. And the, the pros and cons of the timing of that. <laughs> you sure you, you, know? you can you can see it? Now. Actually, Falmouth does their town election after. Their town meeting, because the, the town meeting, the town meeting rejected a, uh, a move to do an override for taking down the wind turbines, uh -huh. and the selectmen decided to put it on the ballot anyway, um, in a stunning move of feeling the pulse of the town. And then they got blown <laughs> away at town election too, as they should, as they, they should have. It was a nice well, touch, blown really away. It was like fifty-eight forty-two. That's yeah, as they should have. Well, yeah, if you you know, the town says something. The voters, know. the voters decide, not us. So, um, so they do theirs after. They also just, I'm sorry for, you know, we're only at, I'm running a quick meeting here, but. No, that clock stopped about 40 minutes ago. Yeah. Did it? Oh, yeah. yeah that, don't look at that clock. Damn. <laughs> that clock is an hour. Oh, geez. Well, it's an let's, hour off. Let's move. <laughs> um, they had a, um, they had a series of questions regarding form of government. It wasn't necessarily a charter. It was form of government. It was 26 ballot questions. They had two override questions, 26 ballot questions, and then a non-binding question at the end about, do you want to tell the congressman to shut down Pilgrim Nuclear Power Plant? 
which showed up in a number of Cape communities because of the evacuation dangers. So I, I'm sure that'll go someplace. Um, it was a two-page, you know, two to three. Back, page back on an old topic, if I may. Yeah. Um, may I make a suggestion that um, Marion send out that policy regarding warrants, and with an additional cover note that states that we will be establishing a very strict time frame, mm -hmm. and that it will be strictly adhered to for the fall town meeting. And then she sent it to all the chairs of the various boards that submit articles. And, and then we can follow up with phone calls. But you should also it. CC all the selectmen on that strong policy. So <laughs> Scott or I aren't booping in articles yeah. two days before. I would include us in that distribution. That's a good thing. Yeah. Be happy to do that. Executive order number two. <laughs> All right, we have some minutes, unless we have more, any more debate? Leave those to discussion. Mr. Bugby. Okay. His last, last minute. official act is clerk. Well, I move to approve the minutes of April 24th, 2013, both regular and executive session. Second. Uh, the minute approval has been mo uh, moved and seconded. Is there any other discussion? No. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. It is a vote. Mr. Hathaway. Do we have anything else? Um, two very quick things. Um, I gave you at the beginning of the meeting a letter from uh, that Mr. Byron uh, dropped off today, a packet that is related to a meeting he went to with SWAP, um, the, area, the Southwest Area Planning Group. Uh, very interesting article and talks about the tip process I don't think it's just unfortunately we're not we don't have any projects we personally don't have any projects on uh, the tip but there is uh, um, there are some including the 495 route 1a ramp that uh, uh, we did talk some we've had a couple discussions about recently so um, I have not had a chance to read this yet uh, I haven't I've read his cover letter I didn't read through all of them. We were just talking about this today, weren't we? Yeah, and I actually just happened to flip through this and I saw that 495, the, that slip ramp that they're going to put, um, hopefully, um, get onto the tip project list uh, pretty quick. Would you extend to, to Walter our appreciation? This is the first time <laughs> I can remember we've ever had someone That's really actively engaged and report back on on. Uh, in this meeting, so thank him for us if you approve. Uh, certainly, as as you wish, Mr. Lee. And uh, in that in that vein, I had to uh, suggest I sat with Mr. McFeely for uh, a period of time today, and uh, he gave me an update on the Norfolk County Advisory Board that he is you know, mm -hmm. appointed to, and uh, um, he gave me a copy. Well. He, he, he emailed me a copy of their budget, um, which I have upstairs, <coughs> and you're certainly more than welcome to have a copy of, or I can email to you if you want to see it. Um, he told me that basically they're they're on better footing. Um, their revenues are all up because a lot of their revenues are driven by activity that goes on at the uh, registry of deeds, and whether it's refinancing or, or home sales. So their their fees are up significantly, so they're doing better. Um, he asked a couple of things. Just uh, we had seen a letter four or five months ago from Brookline. Um, Brookline asked that uh, these are Jack's words, not mine, but uh, he paraphrased the letter and said, "Really, he would like to they, Brookline would like to dissolve uh, the county government structure and um, and had a long list of things." And he he said there are some holes in in Brookline's argument, and uh, he encouraged us to actually do the opposite and and, and uh, continue to look forward to, um, you know, the county, if used properly, can be used efficiently. And, and mm -hmm. our regionalization project, he and I talked about for a long time, he, you know, and he's got some history there, obviously, as well. But that's a good example of regionalization. And, and he's encouraged that the, the county, um, we use county engineers at no cost to us, um, no additional cost to us, I should say, uh, for the Lake Street project. Um, we've used them on occasion. Um, Takes, we get into a long queue when we use them, but but the f price is right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, his t the short short the wrap up, I guess, is just that he's encouraging us to to stay involved with the county and, and not buy into if uh, 
if Brookline or some other towns get on the, the bandwagon of dissolving county because it's uh, it it's so much bigger. And not that it matters, but they're so much bigger. I mean, like, you know, like someone like us, it does seem make sense. Well, well, Brookline's been on this crusade for a while. Sure, yeah. This this is not a new issue for them. I, I and I don't understand why. Well, they have well, their probably own. cost them a lot more than it cost us. Yeah. Well, I'm and sure it does, but they, you know, they still have the same element of benefits that we have. I and mean, I found the county, you know, we've gotten more out of it than we've given. It. I mean, I. Yeah. So. I think it's been a good thing. And then, you know, Brookline is, you know, I'm looking at the county map. Brookline is <laughs> is ge geographically disconnected from uh, the rest of the county, as is Cohasset. And uh, although they've asked to be, um, I mean, that's because Brookline wanted it that way. Why did Brookline? That's Suffolk grew around them they didn't want to be a part of boston essentially well yeah so i guess they're they're keeping their their independent they uh, they would yeah, like they, be an island unto themselves um and i think they have their own they have some Brookline of their own county. courts um that they don't use the county courts uh, quite as often as as the rest of us do so whatever their reasons are they're they're their reasons and uh, i think the county works very it works great for us as you guys have already said so um, and the last thing is I've asked Mr. Uh, I've invited Mr. Lehan um, because he's had some history with us in the past to join us at the next school building committee meeting. Um, we're continuing to, you know, try and wrap up that project. Um, for the past, it's been it's been brewing for a period of time now, and it's kind of come to a head. Um, you know, we're really, uh, I guess, the committee's frustrated with the project managers um, uh, trying to get us trying to wrap his hands around uh, what the good budget numbers are at the end of the project here. Um, and so we're, you know, and, and the, the question that he is trying to resolve is the funding from the MSBA. And so when they, you know, when we send a payment in to be processed, they go through a, pro you know, they either approve it or partially um, deny it. Um, and then we go through a budget, you know, then there's, there's a, another process that the project manager is in charge of where he goes through budget change orders uh, that have been approved by the committee and those budget change orders have gotten backlogged and you know whether that's at the project manager or at the, or at the MSBA or some combination of the two um, certainly has created a lot of bunch budget tension for the committee and we're you know we're trying to wrap this up I know I'm sure the citizens certainly want to see the Boardman Street side of the building be finished you know the, the fields get finished and we more than um, you know we certainly do too. So we're trying to wrap that up. Uh, right now, you know, I think in a, from what we're being told and, and the way we process the numbers too, you know, kind of a worst case scenario where we're, we're gonna come in just under the wire. Um, where we're, we've been working um, to try and come in significantly under, the, under budget and if the MSBA processes everything the way we think they should process it and the project manager gets everything done, the way we think he does, we think we'll still have a surplus at the end of the day, but um, I can't guarantee that until the project manager and the MSBA finish doing all the magic processing that they have to do. So um, Jim was involved in the project back when we kind of strong-armed the project manager and the architect a couple of years ago, and I asked him, uh, I was giving him an update one day, and asked him to join us. Of course, I, we can post a committee post it, and you yeah. can do whatever you want. Uh, unless you do have a... I mean, I have an issue, but no, I don't need to think of any question I have to, is there any, there's no possibility of coming in over budget, right? Not, but no possibility, but the, the, because I, we No, I, I, I almost a million dollars when we, when we've looked at, when we look at the budget numbers from them, no, um, um, no, I, it, from my, from my understanding and looking at it and also looking at it with the school business office, no, I don't think we're going to come in under budget, um, and I, I can't envision a scenario where we would come in over budget um, one of the frustrating things and I mentioned it to Jim I think today was just that you know one of the, the third part of the trifecta that we're frustrated with is the is the general contractor because we've got to finish some of the change or you know we're we're trying to the discussion we had a year ago about the field space and whether there's a baseball field there or we turn that just into a playground field um, now they've got us kind of over a barrel as far as the as the change orders go because they're the change order that we've asked for a price back on um, which is a lot of deletions for a baseball field and then just putting in a field, field you would about. think the common man like me would think that that would that's going to save us money yeah exactly. and actually it's come they're coming back with a you know an increase or, or very minimal decreases so we're we're challenging that 
you know, so now we have to go through, the, we've asked the project manager to, you know, look at, give us all of our different options based on the money that we have left. Can we either just go back to the original contract and just finish up and get out of there? Do we do a, a change order and, you know, but somehow fight the general contractor and get a reasonable price? Or do we just stop and walk away, settle what we have to settle, and then rebid the remaining work? So those are the three options we're looking at right now. And it's, uh, um, I guess I'd just like to have, I'd invite Mr. Leanne in just as heavy hand. to have the weight of the board yeah. come in and, and let them know we're serious about this. <clears throat> Our bear in the closet. Yes. Uh, any surplus funding? is going to buy down the debt, right? Uh, buy down the debt. Um, Provide tax relief for the hard put upon taxpayers in Norfolk. Have you fully obligated all the debt? Uh, yeah, we have, we borrowed all the debt. Um, so then you would, you would, you could reduce that debt. Well, the money, I'm, and I'm sorry to hesitate, I'm just thinking about what, I mean, the, I think um, any surplus in the project, um, you can either, town meeting can either vote to use it for a similar project, or um, I don't see why you couldn't vote to appropriate it into the, into the debt budget and, and therefore not have to um, have that money be part of the, the DE1 or the, the debt exemption schedule next year, which, which, is the, which is the impact on the tax rate. So yeah, I'm sure if that's the will of the selectmen and the town meeting, we could get that money into relief for the tax rate. I may be wrong, but I think that you, I think, I think we're saying the same thing. I believe that, I, I agree, I think it needs a vote, but I believe that you can allocate that payment. Let, let's say you've got $500,000. You can direct that 500000 It has to be to reduce debt, but you can pick and choose what debt you want to reduce. I don't believe it has to be. And, and, and the reason I say that is that we, we've got yeah. debt at all different tiers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I mean, you... So you get your highest interest at first. Well, right? even, even more so, timing and yeah, things. I mean, there, things there are a lot of things that, that weigh in. Sometimes paying, you know, you don't necessarily save money in some of the circumstances, right. but having the ability to have a, a chunk of money, whatever it is, yeah. And being able to then, and Julie's very good at this, and, and analyzing exactly how some of those bonds flow, place, we, yeah. we want to get the best deal in terms of the most payback we can. And it's so it might not be the school. It might be, it might not be. That's my only point, is that, that I believe we have that flexibility, and we, we should take advantage of that. I know Julie will. Yeah. She's very good at that. Yeah. Yeah, yep. This is no, just right. one vote and one vote at town meeting, but I would much rather see $50,000 taken off the debt than... Buy oh, another yeah. truck. Uh, here's two votes. No, I agree. The debt, I mean, it's <laughs> the same money on People vote for the tax. I, I think, I think we've been Nothing very, very price. doggedly persistent about that. If there's a dime saved, it goes back to the taxpayer. Yeah. No, that's fine. In, I, in the form I'm, of reducing debt, right. which reduces our obligation, which reduces the cost, and all of that goes back to the taxpayer. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? All right, so anything else, gentlemen? I hope you feel much better. I know this is, uh, I know you're very under the weather, so I'm um, you. glad you made it. Thank you. You, you look great, though. All right, well, it's better look good than to feel good, right? So um, as we adjourn tonight, I'd like to adjourn with the grateful recognition of Harvey Belay's many years of service to the Board of Library Trustees. And we adjourn tonight, and we'll meet again June 11th at 7 p.m. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. The and I hope board you feel better shortly.